Well, what about the tools that are um, the technology that is specific to the the challenges present in alternative data, right? So um, I'm specifically talking about things like um, ticker mapping, entity mapping, uh, bias reduction, uh, the, the panel issue where users drop in and out of the panel of data. So let's talk about some of the um, new modeling techniques or existing modeling techniques that are that have been used by successful practitioners to address those issues. Yeah, I can try to take this one. Yeah, uh, there are methodological challenges uh, when it comes to working with alternative data, of course, to the point of fairly, you know, big volumes, but the good thing is you don't have to move the data. Sometimes you interface with an API or you take a dump from S3 and you get the data in a time series form in your computer. So th there is one problem here. For example, in terms of analytics, we deal with 6,000 different variables in our model, so we have around 1,000 uh, different data sources. So how to manage the multitude uh, of simple data streams? They've been simplified because we interface for an API, but how to manage the multitude? So this is a technological challenge because, uh, you know, alternative data comes from many data vendors in different forms and use more than one data source. So how to orchestrate these, these data streams? And, you know, there are several solutions. Uh, out there like Apache Airflow, and you have to follow the, you know, the data feeds almost every minute to, to understand if something uh, uh, breaks. When it comes to methodological challenges, the, even if you interface in a clean way through an API, sometimes you get data that's not of great quality, and this is not limitation of the data vendor, maybe this is a limitation of the source itself, like web data. And you have to extract data and you have to extract sentiment, which is noisy. Or you buy satellite data in their cloud, so you don't have a data point, so you have missing data. Uh, you have outliers, genuine outliers, uh, technical outliers. You have problems with stale data uh, as well, because you know you, you can source, we source a lot of data from public entities like the United Nations, uh, NASA, and so on. And they're by no means obliged to give you a data feed. You know, they're not contractually obliged with free data, but all of a sudden it can disappear. So how to make interpolation, extrapolations, outlier removal? Quality so it comes control. With, with yeah, a lot of techniques. You know, and, and it happened to us all of a sudden a, a data series is missing, or all of a sudden. And what do you do? You have immediately to have the process to find the closest replacement proxy. Uh, so for in order your models not to be interrupted uh, uh, from running. So it, it's a whole process. So it's technology engineering, it's methodology, there are machine learning techniques to do the interpolation, extra extrapolation, but it's also a process. People who have to follow this, these different pieces. I think one of the key bits really speaks to a lot of the mechanical delivery pieces. Um, you know, just sort of the rise of the cloud is sort of help with that in the sense you used to be, you'd say, did I get the whole file? Now, if you're connecting to somebody's bucket, like presumably it's all there, they've handled that, you would think. Um, but what's been interesting, I think, with the rise of Copilot and, and, and technology along those lines has really been that a lot of the people who understand how to work with a given data set, the ones that get like, ah, here's what's happening in retail data or whatever, maybe aren't the best programmers. And so it gives them the ability to actually take their knowledge, extract what they need, translate that better without needing to explain it to somebody who's maybe technically competent, but doesn't have that same field of knowledge. And then there were the things like ticker mapping that have always sort of been true, where no one's really an expert. Like somebody just has to spend enough time to sit down and go through it and dig through a lot of stuff that no one has an expertise, particularly of like, here's all the things that make up, you know, a given ticker. You have to uncover that and discover it. But again, by virtue of Copilot and AI technologies and search engines and everything, can you take somebody who's a relatively less expensive person, give them a mandate and say, okay, you go chase this down. Great. Now do it a thousand more times. Now you've got something to be done. Now you finish. Great. Now do it every morning at 8.55 a.m. before the market's open. Um, that's kind of always been the process, but I think the, the threshold for the capability of that individual has come down so you can get people that are maybe more energized earlier in their career cycle who want to do that kind of work without needing somebody who's like, ah, oh, you have 20 years of Python programming experience because you don't need that as much now to actually do that work. And that's been, I think, a really big change will continue to be a big change going forward. But a lot of that stuff is still going to be, you know, human effort and, and manual work, because there's really no way to automate those things. Just I mean, you've seen this over the years, Gene, like everything that can go wrong does just every single thing. So that's just life. Yeah, yeah, I would uh, argue that majority of the building basic problems were solved today. 
I would argue that we are mere integrators. So let's separate a little bit the domain engineering, whereas we understand the data that we're looking at and we actually want to extract more value and further value versus the, uh, well, whether the, the data arrived or the data was, or tickers were mapped. So um, if you're going into production and you need your tickers mapped, the problem is solved. So, you know, there are vendors out there that, that will do that, you know, uh, without limitation, like uh, there is Mactia, for example, as a company, they just do this for you if there is enough value for you not to do it yourself. Or the building block of, of um, workflow orchestration is done. Uh, it's solved, it is a solved problem. Um, what I would argue is like, you'd need to start from the domain, from what exactly you want to do, from hypothesis, rather than, you know, and then integrate things or do the prior research for things that already exist and just integrate them.